Hi, Keith Dan Wimmer, Van Tech Consulting. Today we're going to talk a little bit about some of the tools that are available to technicians for cable entry. Uh, first and foremost, before we get started real quick, we're going to talk personal safety or PPE, personal protective equipment, safety glasses. Always, always, always wear your safety glasses whenever working with fiber optics. Next up, work gloves. Protect your hands. The deal with these is they'll protect your hands against abrasions and things like that. They're not going to protect you against cuts. Razor knives, hook blades, etc. We always want to wear something that's going to protect our hands against cuts. Now these guys will protect you a little bit against the armor, which will slice you like a razor blade, but again, they're not cut gloves, okay? Brings us to cut gloves. Cut gloves are terrific. They're inexpensive. They protect your hands from cuts. Every technician should have a pair, especially when you're prepping cable. I got these with the rubber grippy on them. These guys here protect you against slicing. So if you have a knife and you get sliced and you go across your hand, they will protect you from that. If you're one of the people who likes to use these guys, this is a hook blade it won't protect you against these. Once that hook goes in, it's going to go in through the netting and it will actually uh, slice your hand. Now, yes, it will give you a little bit of protection as far as limiting how far across your hand that hook blades are gonna go. So in other words, if you didn't have gloves and you slipped, you would go across your entire hand where these guys on, you might only slice yourself an inch. Either way, you're going for stitches. Let's talk about cable entry tools. I'm going to go in order of preference. So before I get started, as you're seeing different brand names, things like that, first off, Vantech Consulting is not compensated or paid to endorse anybody's products. Fiber entry tools were developed with a couple things in mind. One, Fiber safety, so we always want to make sure that we keep the fiber safe, that we don't have any kind of damage going to the strands when we're entering it and causing a network outage. The second thing we're talking about is technician safety and personnel safety, so they limit your exposure to being cut, things like this. In order of least favorite razor knives, any type of razor knife that we're going to use this stuff will cut through the buffer tubes and you'll never even know it until you get that call from the knock saying that you have an outage. That's my second least favorite. My absolute least favorite is this guy. These hook knives, I've been doing this and I've been in the industry for about 35 years and uh, I've seen more outages caused by these guys than any other implement in the field. Uh, this is not an if it's going to happen, this is a when it's going to happen. Once this gets in there and if you dive in, you got a buffer tube, you just severed it. You've cut your 12 strands. You basically, I promise you, that when you cut the fiber using a hook blade, it is not going to be the fiber that's dark and that you're supposed to be splicing. It's going to be the one that's carrying the 100 gig that has service level agreements on it. These guys don't belong in a technician's toolkit for anything other than opening boxes. Hook blades, if it was my company, I would ban these. You, you would not be allowed to have these anywhere near your, uh, your tools, okay? Next up is these guys. Razor type blade. Keep these things very sharp. Slips are going to cause personal injury. They're going to cause injury to the fiber. Not a favorite. The next guy, this guy here is what's called a uh, ringing cable sheath slitter type thing. It's made by Gennard. There's a few different ones out there. They range in price from a few hundred dollars down into the sub 100. The way that this works, there's a blade inside here. It, has an adjustment so you can go up or down. You adjust this according to the depth of your sheath. So you would put this in so that, you know, it's it's just getting the just getting to the depth of your 
polyethylene, your PE sheath. So you adjust that down and the idea behind this is what it's supposed to do is it's supposed to ride down your sheath inside and slit the sheath as it comes down here. Now these guys, they work really, really well when you're doing copper splicing. If you guys are ever doing that, which you know it's kind of dying out, but uh, if you're doing that and you're working on a larger cable, you know, 200, 600 pair, these things are great. You put this in, you hold it down on the front, and then basically this guy here just ratchets along the cable and, and causes a slit. Um, smaller cables, they don't work so good. They're, they're a little cumbersome to use. They'll slip and cause problems. So while I like this for copper and the larger cables, for smaller cables, yeah, it's not going to work for you. This guy here is a giant clothespin, so he's much like the buffer tube ringer. Blade adjustment, very simple, just one screw. Again, you're going to lay this in and adjust that so that you can see that it's just going the thickness of that polyethylene jacket. You don't want it going all the way to the armor when you set these depths. You just want it going right up to the armor, not into it. All right, uh, once you have that, pretty simple. Just make sure and pay attention which side that's ringing on because the blade is set on one side here. So you just take it, give it a squeeze, go around. All right, that's it. And it gives you your nice ring cut. One of the things that I'll use, just a bonus hint here, we all use Sharpies or we'll use tape or something like that. These guys here, these china markers, are great. You just kind of give that a mark where you're having this. You can see it. They don't wipe off like a Sharpie as, as easily as a Sharpie, so they'll always stay there. They just seem to be pretty good. So again, Amazon's your friend on this. These guys here, they're made by Sharpie. Uh, they're just a peel-off china marker or wax pencil is what some people call them. Okay, that's the clothespin. Next up is the ACS. So this is what's called an armor cable slitter. Um, same type of thing. We have a blade inside here, right in the groove. So you just swing this blade in a radial fashion. What would happen is this guy here, you back the blade down. You would lay your cable in here. Slide this down, go up. Now, this guy here is, is always a little difficult to um, get it nice and snug. Once you have it snug, you're gonna put it in either a uh, radial or a longitudinal cutting fashion, so don't forget which way your blade's pointed. And then you just twist this up, which would go into and drive that blade into the uh, the cable and through the polyethylene at that point you would either grab this and ring go I'll just take that out for a second go around this way to get your radial cut once you've done that you would take back it out slide it back in and then slide this down the cable now this guy here works pretty good when you got two people um, when you only have one person, it's a little wonky it's because you need both hands on this and there's no way to, to kind of hold that cable while you're pulling this down. The idea is to get that blade so that it rides down the side on the armor and you'll hear it just cutting the, uh, the ridges on the armor. So you, it sounds, you know, just kind of like a little zipper there dangerous if you're going to do this get yourself a piece of the scrap cable that you're actually working on and set this precisely take your time to set that up again working with a partner get that precise as you can this guy they run about 200 250 dollars uh, they have their place some people love them they have uh, one of them i've seen is similar and it has two blades in it and kind of has a handle and, and does this with two blades going in so you, you don't have to flip this over and, and do the other side. The biggest thing with these is that as you're going down this cable, what happens is they tend to roll up. And so as it's slitting down the side, it rolls up this way. 
and then this guy here while he's slitting down the slide rolls up this way and then you get this V cut in it and you're back to square one re-entering your cable. So again not, not a favorite one but it's not terrible. All right down to my favorites. I'm about safety not only for the technician but for the fiber. Uh, we don't want to cause any kind of damage to the fiber. We don't want any network outages. Not a good thing. These guys here are cable ringers. Not all of them do the exact same thing. There's there are different manufacturers, Greenlee, Gennard, uh, Miller, uh, all kinds of these guys out there. Some of them have the special added feature of doing spiral cuts, which we'll talk about. Um, some of them don't. So these guys here are what happens with them is again you're going to take and there's a blade inside right here right at that point right there and what will happen is you just turn this either in or out to adjust the depth of the blade so what you're going to do is you're going to take your cable you're going to hold this up get it to where you got a point and then just try and get that depth absolutely as precise as you can for the for the jacketing so make sure that you check the cable that you're working with and make sure that your depth isn't too deep and it's going all the way through the polyethylene armor and into your buffer tubes and cutting the fiber so once you have this adjusted basically you just come up set it in a position I put a little pressure on it dig it in do a few turns on it so these guys also have a longitudinal function where the handle actually turns and it puts the blade in a longitudinal type attitude, meaning that you can slice up this fiber or up the cable. So you'd basically put this in, rotate it, and I've always found this to be like a little difficult to manage uh, and you would just go up like this again you know these guys if, I, if you go on the bottom that way you can put your hand here and hold that and kind of push this up now it's not something that I use a lot of um, the idea is that you could get this this slit on the side but you know if you look at this this slit basically just in this short you know went like that so I mean it, it kind of spiraled up along here speaking of spiraling this is where this guy really excels and if you're doing a mid sheath entry one of the hardest things to do is enter into the cable safely so what we're going to do is you'd come up you would pick your where you're going to get your window you do ring cut one you're going to move up some distance depending on how far your window is going to be. Now when I do this I only open up about six inches just to begin. Again give it a little compression, go around. Without taking this out if you pull this tower right here, if you pull that up notice what happens. We get this gap here and what that's done is the blade right now has been in this aspect and ringing this way what it does is that tips the blade over so now when we cut it starts to spiral so this is my first ring right here this is my second ring over here and this spirals down and once you get to this point you just take this off and that's the angle there so this is the, the intersection. So what we're going to do now is we're going to try and grab this right here and pinch that up. And there we go. And then we just take this down. That comes down to that end. Once you get to this point, whenever you're handling this armor, Again, you want to make sure that you have gloves on. I mean, this, this stuff is 
you get cut and the next thing you know, I mean, you don't even know you've been cut. Um, at this point, what I'll do is I'll just take my snips and kind of get in here, take the edge of the snip right there and put that up against the armor and kind of pop that open and then go down to the other side. Again, not, not very good with left-handed here, so. Pop that open. Now try not to touch the armor as much as possible. I try to keep my fingers off of it. Break that right there. And all we're trying to do is just expose where, you know, get our, get our strings out. Now, if you're really lucky, you know, right here, you've hit a, you've hit a, uh, a switchback. If not, basically you just take and cut your strings, zip that way, zip that way, open up another window, you know, foot and a half or so to find out where your switchback is. Once you've got that, center that and go on from there. But that's, uh, that's this guy. And, and basically what you notice is there wasn't really a lot of stress on the fiber. Everything looks good in here. Make sure that you are following all their safety rules and things like that. Make sure that you're being as safe as possible. We don't want any injuries out in the field. All right. That's it. Hope this is helpful. We'll talk to you soon. Be safe. Thank you.